City of San Juan Commission today, November 22nd, 2016, at 6 p.m. If we can rise for an invocation. Mr. Arbona, can you lead us in an invocation? for your supreme wisdom upon your activities so that our affairs may reach a successful conclusion. Thank you for being our source of guidance today and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Y'all may be seated. We have one public comment by Rick Ramirez. If you can come. Presentations, item 5A, presentation, department of Pro, uh, reports, department of finance, fire, utilities, police, municipal court, and city manager. Mayor Commissioners, good evening. We have all department directors available if there's any questions. And I'd like to say just a couple of things on our report for the some, some of the uh, uh, project updates that, that we currently have within Go the ahead, city. Go ahead, Mr. Arjona. Um, wanted to touch base first on the uh, brush drop-off site. Just want to let you know that the uh, the staff has been doing a tremendous job as far as cleaning the site. It's already 99% completed. Uh, all of the brush is pretty much gone. Uh, the only the only thing that we currently have is the tires, but that uh, should be taken care of within maybe the next couple of weeks. We have a load load and have maybe two loads of tires that we need to dispose, and, and then, then after that, uh, we should be pretty much clean on on the uh, drop off site. So I want to congratulate the staff of the uh, Miss uh, Carmen Gonzalez. Uh, in the next couple of weeks, or the next few days, um, we're going to be talking to the uh, TCQ representatives out of Harlingen. I'm going to be with Ms. Gonzalez and them, so that uh, giving us the advantages of, of keeping the brush drop-off side or maybe going with the uh, citizen collection side, and then we'll bring them before you for discussion on that. Uh, the street projects that you know, uh, have a question, Mayor? On the street projects, uh, as you know, we have an agenda item that uh, we're going to uh, Hopefully, vote on it with the uh, on the contract and the uh, with the engineers, and then after that, uh, we'll, we'll continue. We'll start with the uh, reconstructing of the uh, some of the streets. And uh, today, we met with the uh, some of the uh, folks on the uh, uh, our staff with a new Freedom Sidewalk project. We met with the ADA consultant. Unfortunately, some of the ramps that uh, they were built by their contractor were didn't pass. There were some deficiencies. Uh, we're gonna, they're already being addressed, and the, uh, we're talking to the contractors, and they need to uh, fix them to the standards that, that is required on the ADA. And the uh, strategic plan, Leslie. Um, Let me just ask a question. When you say that they need to be uh, fixed, uh, we, we knew that from the get-go that had to be done. Who's going to pay for that when they come back? It'll be the contractor. They have the specs, the engineering specs. I mean, they did. And as far as the loose bricks, I know that there has been work done. Have you gone back to inspect that? Yes, yes, we did. We're still within the time frame. And did they uh, secure it with some concrete, or did they secure it just with? Sand what they again? did, they uh, they raised the uh, the curb, and they secured it with a, with not concrete, but also but only <coughs> with the sand, and they compacted it. We did a walkthrough on that, and, and it looks uh, a lot better than before, Mayor. Let me go back to the brush site when you. 
Uh, talk about the holding site. Um, what is going to be the plan since once we clean all of it up? What's the plan going to be as we move forward once we've been cleared by TCEQ? How are we going to handle that? Well, I have, uh, Mr. Arjona and I have met, and what I like to see continue to pick up the brush in that. But I'd like to see it as a transfer station where the, uh, we have certain containers. We'll have an employee there, like in a little house. The uh, <coughs> residents will come in if they want to dispose of items that we normally don't pick up or it's out of schedule. Um, they'll come in, and then we'll have containers for them, labeled tires, brush, uh, whatever debris in that. Can we talk about containers like the, 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 the ones that go on the yard, roll-offs? The roll-offs. Um, maybe, and I'm gonna say maybe do it like they do in Edinburgh, and I hate to use Edinburgh, but they'll charge us like, I, I do it. Every three months they charge you $25 to do whatever. They give you a little permit, and you can go as m many times as you want to dispose of uh, whatever you have. And we keep it real neat. We'll have a, an employee there or two to make sure that it stays as neat as it looks now. And so would we be, if the folks are, folks are bringing Cells, are they going to be lowered so that they're able yes, to dump? Yes, we talked about that. I talked to my employer, tell Mr. Uh, Arjona, but it's a good idea because I even have had to help some of the elderly because they're too high. They're too high. They can't. There's no way yeah. we expect them to throw. And I think they do it the same way, Mayor. They put concrete, they lower it, and they put the containers down there, or they'll uh, tip them a little. So we'll, we'll have start a working plan. at that. Yes. Because once that's cleared, if we're going to allow the, our folks to come back and start doing that, we want to make it so it's accessible to them. We're going to have to also have somebody with a uh, truck or with a forklift to be doing that. You don't want right. to put that much manpower out there. Mm -hmm. So um, you'd be working on that and bring that back. Yes. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Arjona. Yes, and, and like I was saying, the uh, strategic plan. Uh, I have already uh, submitted some of the pictures that, uh, that that needed to be submitted over to Mr. Mata. Some of the verbiage that uh, there was misspells here, grammatical errors, uh, department names that they were uh, spelled uh, in incorrectly. I already spoke to Mr. Mata. He's pretty much got everything ready. We'll present that on the next meeting. Are there any ongoing projects? Those are, are going to be presented here in the next couple of items. Unless we want the, uh, I've got Mr. Mark Lamides here available to present the uh, Las Flores, uh, Los Chaparrales, and the water plant, unless you want to wait until the next uh, item. When we have him. He'll be talking to the water plant, right? It, it'll be about the water plant, the other two projects. Right. All right. I have a question for Go Ms. ahead. Uh, Ms. Gonzalez, as far as what's the total cost up to this point in reference to the brush? You know. I'm not really sure. I, I couldn't answer that. It has to be the finance director. OK. By any chance, do you know Leroy? No? Okay. I do know it's not as high as uh, the companies that wanted to charge us. Okay. If we went over 190000 that includes salaries <clears throat> and working on Saturdays. And, but don't, you know. We, we can bring it back on, on the next. Uh, yeah, I was just going to ask more if, up to the. Yeah, if you, you know, the next meeting we have, you can get me that information. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Any other questions for any? Of the other? I have one, Mayor. Go Mr. ahead. Mr. Enrique, uh, Scoffla, are we up and running? Contract last week, so we're just waiting for them to bring it back once they have it uh, on their agenda. And then we'll start uh, <coughs> with, uh, with the Scoffla. Will we start before the new year or after the new year? Yes. Yeah, yes, Commissioner, it'll probably be after the new year. Yeah. The contract was sent over to the, to the Commissioner's Court once it's approved. Then they'll come back to us. We'll need, we will need to do some extracting of data and uh, I guess uh, play around with the data, make sure that <coughs> the uh, data that, that was transferred over is, is accurate. And then at that point, we'll, we'll go live. It'll be after the new year. Any other questions? All right, moving on to public hearing. A, conduct a public hearing and consider an ordinance in first reading for a special use permit for a drive through and for sale of alcoholic beverages for off-premise consumption in a property zone general business district legally described as lot five McBride subdivision located 901 West FM 495 as requested by Cesar Martinez. Mr. Cervantes. Mayor, Commission, good evening. Mr. Cesar Martinez is leasing the drive-through 
visiting the drive through business from the property owner and is applying for a special use permit to operate AJ stop and go drive through business and to allow the sale of alcoholic beverages for off-premise consumption. The drive through business has been in, in this location for several years. The proposed days and hours of operation are Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m., Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 1 a.m., and Sundays from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. This business will generate additional sales taxes for the community. <coughs> this went before the Planning and Zoning Commission on November 3, and they recommended approval uh, unanimously. I'd like to open public hearing at 610. Are there any members of the audience that wishes to make any statements for or against? Any members of the audience for or against? <coughs> any questions from the commission? So this is an existing and we're not changing anything except the owner. Is that correct? It's a, it's a new operator and so that's why they're going through the process so that they can uh, sell alcohol. <coughs> I'd like to go then if there are no other questions close this at 611. Is there a motion for approval as presented? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed same sign motion carries. Uh, for appointments, A, consider removal or appointment of a board member related to the Parks and Recreation Board. Mr. Willingham. Um, yes, uh, Commission, good evening. We had a board member, Diana Almaguer. Come forward. Oh, sorry. Good evening. For the record, Patrick Willingham, Parks and Recreation. Uh, we had uh, Mrs. Dialma, Diana Almaguer uh, submit a formal resignation. Uh, she uh, indicated through email that that would be her formal resignation, so we have a spot uh, vacant to be, to be filled. Very good. I'd like to go ahead and uh, open it up. I'd like to uh, or nominate Claudia Alvarado to replace Diana Almaguer. What's the name? Claudia Alvarado. Have any other nominations? Uh, is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed same sign? Motion carries. Make sure you let her know. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Under item uh, 8A, consider authorizing the city manager to sign a contract with FEDES Consulting Engineers for Paving Construction Improvements Project Phase. Mr. Cervantes, Mr. Holman. Yeah. I guess I'll, I'll read the, the memo. There is uh, 1.5 million available for this project. During the October 11, 2016 meeting, the City Commission authorized the City Manager to negotiate a contract with Perez Consulting Engineers to undertake the engineering plans for this project. The contract is included in, in your packet for, a, your, for your review and approval. Exhibit B of the contract includes the list of streets that will be, will be repaved as a result of this project. The streets listed are based on the recently completed pavements condition study that was conducted by the Civil Engineering Department of the University of Texas at Rio Grande Valley. In addition, staff request for the City Commission to select uh, three streets to be selected as alternate bid items. Uh, the reason for this is if we get, if we get real good bids, uh, we, will have, we will like the option to include uh, one, two, or three additional streets uh, to maximize on the... And what you did the, was on these streets, uh, they come directly from the last one that we reviewed. Yes. Uh, they remained in the same... Um, Category failed, exactly, um, serious. serious, and then very uh, bad, poor, very poor, poor, right? Yes, it doesn't okay. exhibit B of your contract. We didn't change anything. No, okay. but uh, we're asking for three additional streets to be selected. In case we get real good bids, uh, we could also maybe do one, two, or three, uh, depending on the on the on the bids to maximize uh, the funds. So for the three streets, you could just go down, go down the list or select other streets. Okay, um, I have a question, and I don't know, uh, Mr. The amount we stated is 1.5. I know that we had um, 2.8. Of the 2.8, we subtracted Seven. 700,000, leaving us at about 2.1. Why are we 1.5? So this is phase one of, of the. I know, but this yeah. is this is the, the same funding. The oh, no, that's, <coughs> I was that's the money that I was told that was available for phase one, uh, 1.5 million. 
I'm not sure. Was it 2.1 because of the uh, additional extra funding, the surplus? So yes, you're right, Mayor, it's 2.1. It's a typo here. I would like to be able to, um, we need to take advantage, that money's already in the bank and it needs to be used for these streets. No, you, so you, go you're back right. and take a look apologize at that. for that. Well, we, well, we could recommend, uh, add, add, go down the list and just add streets until we have the 2.1. Yes. We could, and, we and could easily. It's, it's only an estimate. Now when we go out right. for bids, how do we do it so the folks don't say, well, we know how much money they got, we're gonna bid this high. Well, it's still a com they're still competitive bids, right? So they wanna, the contracts are, are, are when I want to submit a, as low a bid as possible so they get the project. So um, what we can figure, and I guess as we're looking into, because we are able to cover uh, the categories um, failed and serious and we're entering to the very poor. So uh, the very poor is, is, and these are based on uh, 25 and 30, right. correct? Right. And uh, I'd like to know at, at any point, I know this is for the contract, but like when you come back and when the engineers come back, I'd like to know what we've done with the um, emulsion. Okay. So make sure that's back on the agenda at the next meeting. Okay. Okay, when the engineering gets uh, um, awarded so that we can discuss that. And maybe that's a possibility, Mr. Arjona, for increase in streets. Okay, um, uh, Ms. Wise, I know you're, you're sitting in for Mr. Villalobos. Um, you spoke with Mr. Villalobos regarding the contract? I did. And what is it that he, did he have anything you needed to convey to us, or his, you wanna convey? His only concern regarding the contract was an arbitration clause. Um, he would prefer that there not be an uh, arbitration clause in the contract. I think, uh, I didn't see one, but uh, we wanna make sure. Are you aware of an arbitration clause? I believe so. Okay, can you tell me where it's at? Because we definitely wanna negotiate that. I see the controlling law on general con considerations, page 12. We, have, we do have an indemnity clause on page 13. Uh, where the owner will require that any contract, subcontract performing work in connection with drawings, the owner and the engineer and the consultants shall be, an, will be agreement to hold them harmless and indemnify and defend. He did have concerns regarding the indemnity clause as well and stated to me that he would like to speak with the engineers uh, before signing a contract. Okay. So, um, he said he's available anytime tomorrow to speak and discuss these certain clauses in the contract. So as far as the, uh, I look at the fees and I'm, I'm pleased with the 6%. Um, I think that's, that definitely helps the city to make this go further. I don't see any problems with just having him uh, sit with you to talk about those particular clauses. So subject to those uh, and negotiating through those, um, I think we'd be okay to, uh, to award it tonight, right? Yes. It was just that condition. Yes. And um, anything else that you want to add? That was pretty much it. The uh, arbitration clause that uh, Ms. Weiss is saying. Okay. So I guess we'll uh, just we'll add streets so that we reach the what the two point one the, the two point one million. Make sure we verify the amounts to make sure that we're using all the money that was uh, that we voted on to be for solely for streets. <laughs> right. And minus the, yes. the amount for the for the police department. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, I think the uh, the item that, that, or the amount that we missed was the surplus amount of money is that uh, left over. Right, that right. we're gonna discuss, yes. and hopefully we're not dipping into that either. Right. Okay. Are there any questions on this contract? If not, is there a motion to approve subject to the uh, arbitration and the indemnity clause that need to be uh, reviewed? So move. Is there a second? Second. second. All in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. B status report on the water plant number two expansion project, Los Chaparrales drainage improvements, <coughs> Paseo de las Flores drainage improvements. Um, Mr. Cervantes and Mr. Uh, Arjona. Uh, Mr. Ramirez from Acru is here. Uh, there's, a re there's a report in your packet, and Mr. Ramirez is here in case you have questions. Yes, go ahead and bring him forward. Good evening, commissioners. Good evening. If you'll have any questions on any of those projects, we'll be. Go ahead and walk us through what's, what's where we are. 
Sure. Uh, we'll start off with the water treatment plant project. Uh, we're approximately 61% complete on that project. Uh, it's a little bit delayed than what we would have expected at this point in time. Uh, we're pressing the contractor to and the bonding company to provide us with the, <coughs> an updated schedule. Uh, they have failed to provide that um, to us. How long have you been asking for that? It's been a while. And what's uh, the problem? I think the, the bonding company is tweaking the, what the contractor provided to them so they have full control over the contractor since it was an appointed contractor by them. Uh, according to the contractor, the feedback that I'm getting from him is he provided that schedule to them a long time ago and they're tweaking it. What that means, I don't know. Uh, we're fixing to send an email or a correspondence to the bonding company and see what they respond. Last time that we heard from them, they were gonna provide us uh, a schedule pretty soon and it was gonna be representative of completing the project within the a lot of time. Yeah, so we're looking at March and April yes, for a completion date. Correct. So we're at sixty one percent right now, you're th and, and the fact that not come they're not coming forward. Yeah, and the sixty one percent also please understand that there's a lot of materials that are already on the project. Um, so that kind of varies that number a little bit. But the uh, what concerns us is the uh, when you go in and, and work into the existing component of the plant, that's really uh, a lot of uh, time uh, that gets put into that. That's our concern, because that's the work that's still pending. A lot of the work, the new work, is pretty much complete, uh, most of it. But the work, the rehab kind of work that, that's gonna take place, that's really what uh, we're concerned about, their timeline on that. Uh, it's hard to put a number on that, because again, it's a rehab. When, once you get in there, you don't know what you're gonna find. There might be a lot of things that further delay that. Um, but again, the contractors, when they bid on it, they take that into consideration in their bids. Right. And so um, right now we're just waiting for them to provide us an updated schedule and tell us where they're at with that. Well, I know that the, the reason it, the time so in April, we start having our higher usage come summer. Are we going to having to bring down some of those? Uh, are we going to be switching into the newer area, <coughs> to the new? to the new part of it while the other is being rehabbed and are we thinking that that's gonna be ready to happen <coughs> so we're not caught in some kind of... Correct, so there's there's two components that, let me say this. Uh, one of them is gonna be the transfer pump station, which that one I don't foresee any delays, any further delays on installing that pump station. Once what, the other one's completed. Exactly, and what that pump station will be able to do is that the water that you're producing out of the north plant can be pumped in and stored at the south plant which will allow a little bit and give you a little uh, variance in there. Uh, but on, on the summer, if, if we're at that plant, the new plant is not completed, then we might have problems with that. I'll let David and Sarah just go into that. Yeah, um, that's one of the issues that we're looking at, Mayor. Uh, sorry, I'm Commissioner uh, Public Utilities Director. Uh, one of the things that we're looking at is, in fact, we got a, a report from uh, the engineer to look at their existing pumps, because the part of the existing pumps supposedly were rehabbed back in 2011 when the original plant for the plant started. Unfortunately, between now and then, there's been a lot of corrosion on these pumps. So we we're having different vendors come in and give us a, a proposal to rehab those pumps. So when we do get to March and April, we have them available to pump full capacity. Because right now, we have a couple of them that aren't pumping to full capacity. So we're, we're getting an assessment to find out why um, why it's there and why back in 11 it wasn't addressed, or if it was addressed, what went wrong? Because it's only been five years since it addressed it and the pumps aren't so pumping up for capacity. So was this not looked at when we were looking at the rehab of this? My understanding plant? is that they presented that to the former director and the former director presented a report that that had already been looked at. We're currently looking for that report. We've already contacted the vendor that did that assessment back in 2011 and the rehab of those pumps. We so were cleared at that time. At that time, they were cleared. So we want to take a look at that and see what the actual structural integrity of the pumps were at the time, because we do have pumps right now that aren't pumping at full capacity. And that's why we're, we have issues when we do have issues in the summer. And then at the same thing, as he mentioned, as the engineer just mentioned about the, cor the corrosion of the system, we, uh, last week, actually, we had a section of the, of the plant on the pumping system that just blew out from it being corroded. On the inside, there's no way to see it from the inside, so there was so much back pressure on it that it just completely broke up. So based on that, we want to make sure that we're ready when they start constructing, working on that plant, so we don't we don't see any unforeseen issues of 
pipes breaking once You're they start taking them apart. So when the rehab begins, you've identified exactly. Will that all be covered with what we have allotted? Is what I want to know too. There was a very remember. There was a very small contingency in this project, and one of the things that we're waiting for is from Texas Water Development Board. They haven't responded to our our email on moving or actually changing the scope over to some of the money that was left over from one of the other projects to help cover some of that cost. That all the time. Yeah. And unfortunately, right now, everybody seems to be off for a holiday break, so nobody's responded back. Uh, I did uh, try to contact Ms. Mindy Aloy over there, and I got a response back that she was at office, wouldn't be returning until Monday. So I'm hoping she'll respond by Monday and let us know what the status is on that. Because there was, uh, I forgot the amount of funds that were left over, that were unused, not left over, that were unused for the other project that we're hoping we can ad add more scope to that project to address some of the shortfalls in, in that contingency money for the, for the pump. That's what we're looking at right now. So what I'd like to see, you know, uh, based on what you're talking uh, about regarding the failure for response from the contractor, is it, or from the bond company, or both? At this point, it's both, really. Then I'd like to have some uh, uh, paper trail here. I'd like to see a council also at least review and involved uh, just to make sure that we're documenting. I think it's extremely important. I would hate to see anything further develop that we have, that already delayed this project, and what else can be done right now to make sure that we have put enough uh, pressure on them that they need to stay on schedule. We, are, we you know, especially the bond folks who understand that they've taken it on um, with that assurance that it's gonna get done with what we've uh, initially began this project with. Correct, and, and the request that we made on them for August schedule was in writing letters sent to the bonding company directly, uh, copied contractor, city staff, and, and uh, you know, we're still, and their response was in writing as well, saying that they will. Give them a time frame for them to respond? Yes. Uh, I'm trying to remember what that time frame is right now. It's not clear on the top of my head, but, uh, but we followed up through meetings at the project, trying to get them to provide that as well. So we're at that point where enough is enough, and we need from them to respond one way or the other. So I like I like a report at the next. Sure. I, I don't want this to go back like last time. You know, we sent them. We were waiting. We just need to be consistently. And if the time frame comes up, that if you said seven days, fourteen days, whatever that time was, then we revisit it at that time. It really needs to be consistent. And I like to know what they're doing so we have movement before. Um, you know, this, we're losing time. Sure. Uh, so I'd like, and I'd like to go ahead if you can provide copies to Mr. Arjona that we're documenting, or you're copying him. Are you copying him on your letters? Yes, usually okay. those type of letters will come by Mr. Arjona and Mr. David Salinas. Okay, then just provide them the next report that we get sure. next week, the two weeks from now. Okay. I have All a right. question. Go ahead. Mr. Salinas, how often do you guys meet in reference to this project, and who's involved in this meeting? We meet once a month. The uh, city manager's involved, myself, Mr. Cervantes, the engineer, the, all the different project uh, contractors. Their representatives, the Texas Water Development Board, if they're not present at the meeting, we do conference them in. Uh, finance also is uh, present at the meeting. Either Mr. Mr. Uh, Garza or Mr. Uh, Gonzalez are available at the meeting. At the that once a month? We're meeting once a month, yeah. That's something that we, we may want to discuss and, and move up to twice yeah, a month. That's what I was going to recommend. To, to keep moving forward. Yeah. Uh, we do anticipate that there's more work done because they keep on telling us they're waiting on some of the material to get on site. Material's on site now. So a lot of the underground work should be getting done. A lot of the valve installations should be getting done. So we, we hope that a lot more work than just touching up and painting will be done because that's really been what's been happening for the past month or so. They've just been uh, caulking and sealing and painting uh, the structure that was being constructed. Yeah, especially with yeah. these issues that are rising. I think you guys need to meet more. You know, so that way we can, uh, you know, get the ball going and, and see who you guys need to move. You know, because obviously this is a very, very big project and we need to try to get that completion date. One of the things that's very unique about this project is the general contractor that's out there doesn't have any staff to work on the project. And that was based on the way the project was originally bidded out and, and the contract that came in. And also the Texas Water Development requirements to to procure all the subs and contractors that came along, the way that the, that the takeover agreement uh, came along, it was where the bonding company would <coughs> select the contractor, but that contractor, which in this case is Vertex, was not procured, uh, but they were allowed to to be <coughs> able to work uh, based.
based on the takeover agreement. Uh, they've since come back, the contractor, and they've asked to be procured into the project so they can hire their own hands and try to speed up and, and get more work done. Uh, the Texas Water Development Board allow that? <coughs> Well, they're they're allowing that process, but I think it's like the city's. Actually, it's it's, our, it's already been advertised for them. We I came to the commission uh, was it last month. Yeah, last month. The Water Development Board yes. is on board with that. Yeah, they're on board. They're they're authorized it. We are. They've already approved the language. Uh, uh, Ms. Carmen's already advertised for it. There's there's some issues on the proper procurement process to follow, so I delayed the process a little bit. Once I got squared away, it's been advertised. In fact, you'll see it in the newspaper uh, Sunday. It'll be on there Sunday. So uh, we're once once that's advertised, we'll we'll be able to procure Vertex as a, a contractor, and Texas Water Development Board's on board with it. So, so then at that point, they'll be able to hire personnel and start doing a lot of the work in house themselves. I like them at the next meeting. Actually, there might be a, a problem with, or that might be something that the city attorney can address directly with the bonding company. Uh, that request was made previously by the city. And the response from the bonding company was that they would not allow the contractor to be present at commissioner's meeting. Uh, so I think at that point, what we're, we left it off was if the city really wanted to have somebody from the contractor or the bonding company, then it would have to be addressed directly with y'all's attorneys to their attorneys. But most of the times, those councilors uh, are real limited. Not only this project, but other projects. It's the same bonding company that had those pro some of similar projects. And they're real thin in all the projects, and they're, they're delayed not only this project, but several projects I'm aware throughout the district. I think by, by following the permit process would give us a little bit more teeth and, and actually force them to come and meet with us and give us an update because now they'll be procured through I the mean, proper process. I mean, they want to pick up their check. They need to yeah. come and talk to us. Is that what we need to do? Uh, actually, you know, it's this is we've never in many years of experience that the company has had as engineers, we've never had a project go to the bonding company and, and it's a new experience for us because it somehow does take a little bit of, of the power that we have, you know, to control the, the bonding company and the, and the contractor. A lot of times it's the money, you know, we hold the contractors by the money that they, you know, bill into the contract. In this case, to be honest with you, it's been two months since the contractor has billed to the city to withdraw any money for the project because the bonding company is paying directly all their subs or all the equipment. So to tell them, and that's one of the things that you know, I've thought about, to tell them, hey, we're not going to pay you next time, it seems like they really don't care because they're, they're costing that out the at bond. their end. So again, it, it does take a little bit of power from our end to say, to push the contractor that way and say, <coughs> you need to do this or we'll stop paying you. It's not working out that way in this, the way this contract is planning out. Um, Again, it's, it's, we're experiencing this for the first time as far as uh, taking the bonding company, taking over a project, and uh, it hasn't been fun so far, <coughs> I'll tell you that. About that company go, that's the whole thing. Well, it, it um, definitely de relay the, the message. Uh, we have to get legal involved to just request their presence so we can get some information on the schedule, which is, I think is very important. Uh, we will do that. but. Uh, Keep us informed and update us at the next meeting, and hopefully we can get them to be present as well. All right. Any other questions on the water plant? Uh, okay, let's go on to the um, Los Chaparrales and the Paseo de las Flores. Sure. <clears throat> I'll go on with uh, Los Chaparrales first. Uh, they're looking pretty good. They're 100% complete with the, uh, all the underground piping, the storm lines. Uh, it's all installed. Actually, uh, I went out there today, this afternoon, and uh, they were waiting on some density results to be able to pave uh, Sergeant Trevino. They're, they got the results today. Uh, they should be ready, weather pending, uh, should be ready to pave tomorrow, Sergeant Trevino. That's going to be the second that they're responsible for. Correct. And yes, the county's been notified that this is about to start. Uh, on my understanding, yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and then by they should be done with that section by tomorrow afternoon. If they do that, they'll come back the following week and then start working on the, on the, the subdivision area of the paving. So the, the streets that will be affected and will be paved by this project, will it be around Paisano and Sendero? Yes, ma'am. And how many more streets are left in our, are these streets in our, in our, our projects? The, uh, the other ones, Mr. Arjona, can you check? 
the um, the ones next to it. What is the other street? <coughs> By Baisano. So four streets, I think these streets are are in, in a decent. They're not in the. How many how many streets is this neighborhood? Is it the four streets, four streets, yeah, and then the ones that go across? Yeah. Correct. Yes, I think so. Yes. There's a there, there's one that goes across from Senderos. the. Senderos. Uh, Senderos. I, I want to say that that one was on. And then uh, it's uh, Las Brisas. Las Brisas is there. Not Las Brisas. Campo <coughs> Campo Las. The one that runs across in the very back. Mm -hmm. To be one, two, th are those in that thing? Is it the one who had the same phobia? Remember that, that they, what was the name no, of the street? Retama. Retama. That's Retama. That's not going to be part of it. Yeah. They're not on the uh, serious nor, nor very has poor. The, um, when we were doing a lot of the work with our equipment, the equipment during this project, was it confined to a certain area? Has, have we looked at you know, some more beating up on the other streets? It was pretty much confined within that area. Uh, I don't think that there was anything that they went off of, off of the streets that they were working on. Uh, Las Brechas is the one in the back. There's a, there's a little section at the cul-de-sac where that on the right-hand side of north of uh, Paisano, where we turn there, and we have some minutes in there. There's a little section of that north street that's getting paved up to where the the boundaries of the project, but it's not much. There's a Paisano Avenue. Right, Paisano, and it's Las Brechas in the, in the very back. The very back. That was under that Las Brechas, Paisano, and um, I don't remember the other one. That one? El Campo? Only because I know that if it was part of that, I know that back one is the one that gets flooded, and that one's got had a lot of water damage because it yeah. was the very back one. I think this, How far uh, are you going in? Uh, I would say, Just I have to estimate side. about 50, 100 feet off, off to, the, to the right. <laughs> um, so it's not much, much of that area. Uh, again, it was mainly for the damage that was going to be done when you put it, take out and put the new units in there. And then the corner of uh, Retama, that's going to be on the county side of the work, is that that's correct? On, that's on the other side, right? That's the one that runs north and south okay. at the end of the last street yeah. off the short road. So the county will come in to do from Raul Longoria up to where you all are, our project is finishing up. And then from that other side of the street all the way to Retama. Retama. Not to Cesa, correct? Well, they, they kind of said that uh, they, they, they were probably looking into all the way to Cesa. But our, the commitment to us is up to Retama. To Retama, right. Okay. All right. And so when, when did you say that that would start happening since we're done with the... The paving on... The, the irrigation part is done, not the, yes. the, the drainage so part. So the, the paving on Sergio Trevino should take place, weather permitting, tomorrow morning. Okay. And tomorrow, the rest of the day, and then the following, the Sendero and, and Paisano, uh, the following week. Okay. Uh, so we notified our for coming back and forth in that area. Okay. It's good to know that that's done. Okay. Las Flores? Um, on Las Flores, <coughs> also I visited this project this afternoon as well. Uh, the contractors are already working on, on, they had done about 500 feet or so of the pipe work on, along Moore Road. Uh, they're looking to probably finish that up in the next, n not this week, but next week and install all that line. That would mean that all the piping is completed except for the subdivision area, uh, which would be this area here. So this piece of work would still be pending, but everything else from here along this way would all be completed as far as the piping. They're looking to start in this area here uh, the following week when they come back after the holidays, um, which that would be good. And then um, as soon as they do that, they'll, they'll come back and once they're finished with all the piping here, come back and repave this uh, more road as well. And the only thing that would be pending after that is that crossing on the canal. Are, uh, you, are you on County Road on Moore Road? You know that's county, right? Yes. Uh, not 100% sure on that, but huh? I think it is. So 
So did we? Well, it's, it's a, we're gonna, the streets in the town. Yeah, part of the streets in the county is paved, and we're gonna tear it up. So it's the right thing to do to rebuild. So they, they had, is that part of the, that had been paved on the, coming down on Nebraska or no? I'm sorry, say that again? We had, the county had paved some, for more roads south, they had not paved. Or had they paved? The county the repaved county. to the north. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they repaved that. Okay. And what is the boundary over here? On the, uh, it would be the east side? This right here? Yes. Is that a street or it's just on? It's, it's just an easement. Just an easement, yes, okay. Okay. Very good. And so the, the track where the uh, uh, police department is, is right, that empty lot over there? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Does it affect anything on that one street neighborhood? Uh, eventually when they get in here, this, you know, they're going to have to coordinate traffic control and, and, and what have you to, um, to allow those people to, to have access to their, you know, to the houses, obviously. Um, but you know, they'll coordinate that with the neighborhood. And they've been, they've been good about sending notices to the people and, and coordinating with them. Very good. And that would start when again, Tommy? Uh, hopefully next week. That's what they're looking at. And take how long? Uh, it might take about, uh, I would say about a week, two weeks maybe, depending on, on weather and, of course, the traffic and what have you. And as far as our costs, everything was kept within budget, no overruns, and no change orders. So far, good. good. Um, <clears throat> there's only one thing that uh, they've been, you know, back and forth, we've been back and forth with them, the, that canal crossing. Uh, some things have changed. The irrigation district did, you know, want something different than what they originally had told us they wanted. Uh, we've been going back and forth with them. We're trying to uh, have a scenario where there is no change orders. Uh, we're working with both the irrigation district contractor, see how we can figure that out. Um, but at this point, no change orders. Very good. Yes, ma'am. All right, any questions? Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Under C, consider authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for the mowing lot services. Uh, Ms. Gonzalez? Not you anymore. I mean, we'll take that from you. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Good evening. Uh, on November 3rd, 2016, staff received four bids for mowing of weedy lots from the following companies. TDL Tractor and Lawn Services, Molina Landscaping, Maldonado Nursery and Landscaping, and Conde Landscaping. Staff recommends the weedy lot contracts to TD, TDL Contractor and Lawn Services from Alamo and Molina Landscaping from Donna, Texas. Both of those are the two lowest bidders. Bonded? Yes, ma'am. When they when we go into contract, they're going to have to provide all the documentation that's necessary as far as the insurance and workers' comp information and so forth. Oh, we had Molina work with. Them. I believe so. Yes. We currently had one. Now I know that this is for. The Lots, the um, alleyways, and, and that. Ms. Gonzalez, what are we? The employees are the ones that are doing the alleys that uh, we didn't budget for that, Mayor. <coughs> okay, and this has been budgeted for two companies? $84,000 in, in the budget for mowing of weedy lots, and that has been sufficient. For the entire year? All right, and then following up with the property owners to get reimbursement? Yes, we, after we mow the property, we send an invoice to the property owner. We show them the before and after picture. Uh, we give them 10 days to pay the invoice. There's some uh, processing fees. If they don't pay the invoice, then we, f we follow up and file a lien. Before we do that, we send them a letter to, to do it. The first, the first step after the mowing, send them an invoice. And there's a processing fee. No, 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 before we even mow. We send them, yes, we send them a letter. Uh, the letter is good for one year. So it's a, it's a notice of violation uh, for a witty lot, and it's a one year notice. Even though we're not sending letters time, you know. Who covers what? 
as in two companies? How the, do you break, how do you the break them way, up? Uh, the way we have a lottery once a month. So we put all the, all the witty lads, we put, in a, we put them in sheets of paper, and we put them in a jar, and we call in the contractors, and then we just distribute. That's the way, that's the way we do it. It's a lottery system. Any questions? If not, is there a motion for approval? Approved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor state aye. 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 This meeting is adjourned at 645.